This is Andre Meadows, and I am here with the, the creators, the writers, the voice actors, the stars behind the hit show Super Mansion, uh, which you can see on Crackle. We got Zeb Wells, we got Brecken Meyer, and we got Matthew Sandrich. Uh, so glad to see you guys. See some of you guys again. I remember talking with you guys before. So, uh, but for anyone who does not know, uh, let's give them a, a, a premise of what Super Mansion is all about. It's a group of superheroes that are not great at what they do. They all live in a mansion, and they fight a rogues gallery of villains. And at the beginning of season three, the villains have been declared heroes after helping the heroes save the world. So they all have to live in the mansion together. Yeah, I got to see the trailer uh, that, that popped up, and I was like, oh, that's interesting. Yeah, it's going to be fun. And then I play the Groaner, which is sort of our Batman types villain. And Brecken plays Courtney, which is Black Saturn's best friend. So there's a little rivalry here in this in season three. Yeah, and then, and then how did you guys come up with the concept of the show? Like, like how did this all come about? It, it kind of started where Zeb was doing like the first two seasons of Robot Chicken with us, and is directing a bunch of the Robot Chicken in, uh, seasons for us. And uh, I, I called him into my office and said, "Why aren't you creating your own show?" and uh, put him on the spot, and uh, I had to pressure him into making something, is what happened. And, uh, and, and that's how it kind of evolved. And, and I should say that Zeb is an amazing comic book uh, writer, and has been writing comic books for Marvel for a long period of time, so it, it just is his wheelhouse. I'm just watching uh, the, the puppets he's that we're all doing here. He's having a meltdown, I think. That's what he's here for. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, he's here to get really bored, <laughs> and, then, <laughs> and then start doing crazy things. Because he's so bored. Uh, uh, yeah. Well, 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 actually, Brecken, like, well, what's it like working on this show? Because I mean, obviously, you've been doing Robot Chicken and other stuff. Yeah, I mean, it's like a. It's great. I mean, I've always said, and I don't like to say it to him, but I think Zeb is one of the funniest writers on the planet. And Zeb was always. Zeb always wrote my favorite stuff on Robot, other than the stuff I wrote. And when he started doing Superman, I was super excited. Super excited to be a part of it, and then he didn't hire me for the first season. He didn't write a character that I could do a voice for, he hired literally everybody else on Robot, except me. And then season two, he was like, all right, I'll give a dog a bone. And I'm like, oh, am I a regular? He's like, he's recurring. <laughs> so we'll give you that, so you can be recurring, that'd be great. Zeb is the one for the high-priced talent. Yeah, I mean, it was yeah. he was like, you know what, we could use the kid from Garfield, or we could use Brian Cranston, Keegan-Michael Key, and Chris Pine. <laughs> So he was like, oh, I'm gonna go with Captain Kirk, and so <laughs> he went with Captain Kirk. So I'm recurring on the show, but but I get to play a lot of fun characters. And how did how did that come about? Like getting people like Brian Cranston, the Kenny Lucky, and all these people to be on the show as well. I think it was a, a little bit by accident in a way, where um, we we had written the pilot and uh, we actually cast Seth as uh, our main character originally, and in the script we were talking about it being a Brian Cranston type. Uh, so. And Seth pointed out, why aren't we asking Brian Cranston, who had done Robot Chicken before, and uh, when we sent him the script, it was, what was it, 24 hours, 48 hours later, he called us personally to say how much he loved the pilot script, and he didn't want to just be in the show, he wanted to make the show with us, which I, I thought was a surreal experience. I mean, we were, we both had to like hide in a room, we were out and about, and uh, talk to him on one cell phone, being like, no, this, this is great, and being really awkward and uncomfortable when talking to him. It was right around that time when they were like, yeah, let's make Brecken not existing in the first episode, in the first season. Let's use Brian Cranston. And for the others, I mean, how do we get some of those other people? Just as Brecken mentioned, the delightful writing, the incredible it was scripts incredible, yeah. um, that we sent to these actors. And, and I, I think also, I mean, I, I think, truthfully, the thing is, with actors, you know, we, there's only so many roles you can play on camera that people are going to buy. And the one the great thing about voiceovers is you get to branch out like you never have before. And I think that's what attracted Chris to, and I'm sure it's what attracted Keegan to it. And me too. I mean, there's not a place in this world where I would get to play Courtney if it was a live action thing. Or the angry German anti-Semitic dictator I'd do a little bit of in the next season. Um, but I think that's what brings someone like Brian or Chris or all these people, even Yvette is you get, to, you get to play in a way that you never get to in live action stuff. And of course the writing, but it really is like, I would get to do, like, 
you know, Brian wouldn't play this character necessarily in a feature film. Actually, Brian might, but... <laughs> and a lot, of, a lot of the actors, they do show up. They say, oh, it's so fun, we get to show up in our pajamas if we want to. And then many of them show up in their pajamas. And uh, still smelling of the bar <laughs> from last night. So it's a job that, that they can do without hair, without makeup. And get to play, yeah, come in and play three characters in half an hour. Sometimes that can be inspirational to the characters they play, because sometimes these characters go on binders and go on. Absolutely. Out. Yeah. Now, obviously y'all worked on Robot Chicken, and that's a very different, like, it's like 15 minutes, and then in that show you're doing short, short sketches, and then in this show you're doing a half hour and narrative, and then it's like continuing the storyline. So was that a different process working on this type of show? Yeah, I think uh, Bregan can attest to it. When you're writing on Robot Chicken, you're, a lot of times you think something's funny, and then you realize it's only funny for five seconds, and then you just, you just hit end on the sketch. <laughs> and the channel flips and you walk away from it like it's a hand grenade. But when you're working on Super Mansion, all the jokes have to lead to something and be based in character and be part of the overarching story, so and what it's I love much about, harder. What I love about season three is it has more of a through line and narrative. Um, so these characters you're gonna watch go on a very long journey um, and how they evolve over that course of time. I think when we started, you know, first season it was a little episodic based and you could watch anyone. This one, you're gonna watch these characters evolve and uh, relationships uh, either blossom or explode. And you can watch it at any time on on crackle. crackle. Oh yeah, the thing about Crackle, you have it already. Yeah. That's what they keep telling us. It's already on your TV. It, it's that should be the new goal. slogan. The slogan should be Crackle. You already fucking have it. <laughs> you already fucking have it. <laughs> so, uh, oh, sorry. Just yeah. use it. Sorry for cursing sci-fi. <laughs> you guys have heard that before. Well, it's true like I was born anyway. <laughs> But it's true, I was, I was in my hotel, I was flipping through the TVs, and like, yeah. Crackle was a channel. You have Crackle, like, you already have it. Yes. And so, how much does it cost, Crackle? It. It's free. Absolutely free. They'll pay you. <laughs> all the episodes are on there, you can watch them all. It's like Netflix, but free, and you already have it. <laughs> and it has Superman too, which Netflix doesn't. Although they have Black Mirror and some other really cool stuff. <laughs> I know about that. But they don't have But Superman. seriously guys, go home, Crackle, and chill. <laughs> It's a new thing. <laughs> How has the relationship with Crackle been? Like, are, are they ever... You haven't met them. <laughs> you haven't met them? You haven't met Mr. Crackle? <laughs> <laughs> Jeff Crackle's backstage. <laughs> Uh, so, like so they're couple. fantastic, but I'll let Zeb say, Zeb deals with them on a daily basis. <laughs> yeah, they're great. It was so great to meet them because they just got the show instantly. They want the show to be what it is. We all agree on what the show is, and so... It's like just having a fun, creative partner. And we can do whatever we want on Crackle because it's not on network television or anything, so. It's, again, it, it's, it is one of those relationships where we're helping define them in some way. And it's that, that the comedy that they're looking for is right there. And, uh, and again, like Zeb said, we can do pretty much anything we want on this network, which has been really nice. <laughs> has there been anything that you've created that you've had to either personally or the Gregor like, we can't do that. That's, that's the one step too far. Um, they were like, hey, I don't think you're really going to work with Chris Pine. And then we were like, no, we're going to. <laughs> uh, I don't know. No, I don't think I so. I think one of our writers pitched a character called the Kool-Aids Man, <laughs> um, which I thought was... <laughs> A little, too too big for one yeah, yeah, a little inappropriate, too big for one season, really. So we sold it to Netflix. It's going to be an interesting episode of Black Mirror there. Right? So, uh, but yeah. So, uh, what? Yeah, but uh, yeah, and then is there anything that you can, I mean, you tell us a little bit, but like anything we should expect with the new season, like any celebrity guests or any new characters that we can expect? 40 seconds left, Zeb, talk, hurry up. Yeah. Yeah. No yes. As the, as the season goes, we learn more about Titanium Rex and Dr. DeVizo's relationship and Dr. DeVizo's ex-wife um, may or may not show up in a very fun way and Courtney may be, uh, be the victim of a dark seduction by a, a warring faction of vampires and werewolves. And uh, 
guy. Yeah, that was great. Yeah. If you need Please. more than that, I don't know. I don't know what to tell you guys. Again, guys, it's on your phone already. Yeah, you, you already, you you already right have it right now. That's all right. Everyone, pull out your phone right now. Yeah. Go to, go to the app, yeah, Supreme, download the download Crackle, and you can watch it. But yes, definitely check out Super Mansion. It's a very fun show. The first two seasons and all the specials, holiday specials, are available right now. And then when is season three? May 7th. May 7th. Which is also my birthday. I just wanted Aww. you guys to say that. So, so on May 7th, we're going to celebrate. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Super Mansion's awesome, and happy birthday, yes. Brecken. Yeah. So for Brecken's birthday, everyone watch Super Mansion. Download Crackle and watch it. And thank you guys so much for being here. Really thank, thank you, guys. Thank you, guys. Thank you, guys.